chalk figures in hill art in various forms have been around for thousands of years. In particular, Southern England hosts over 50% of the equine designs. Plus a few more interesting ones. And so today's story is brought to you from a couple of miles southwest of Tidworth, around about a mile north of the A303 between Amesbury and Andover. And without doubt, this is one of the more interesting ones. For context, we need to take ourselves back to World War I. Part of the Bulford camp during the First World War was known as a sling camp, named after a plantation just down the hill. The camp was home to around about 4,500 New Zealand troops, and from day one at the camp, life was very tough. By 1916, men stationed at the camp did the full 30 day term. They came out the other side, very well disciplined and fit soldiers. So, come the end of the war, soldiers that had done their duty were expecting a relatively quick trip home. They didn't get one. In fact, it would be a year before the last New Zealand troops left the camp. So picture the scene. You've done your duty. You're out here stuck on the plane. You've requested relaxed discipline, but it was blankly refused. Subsequently, the troops rioted. They stole food, alcohol, and there was significant unrest. The situation was not resolving itself. A combination of unreliable ships, industrial port action, military bureaucracy, and an effective New Zealand MOD all conspired against the troops. Brigadier General Alexander Stewart decided it would be a good idea to come up with a plan. His plan was this. A 450 foot kiwi dug 30 centimetres into the ground. Its beak alone is 150 feet. It certainly kept the troops busy. It's an incredible sight and it certainly was back then. Colleen Brown, an ancestor of a soldier that died of pneumonia following the war here at the Sling, described it as something passed down between soldiers, not governments. 